What you love about our world today is, you know, capitalism drives a lot of innovation. And, you know, we live in a world where technology is going faster and faster and faster. And the faster it becomes, the bigger risk that we ultimately have because security, as we know, is typically a laggard behind the innovation of this technology. And that is definitely true of our critical infrastructure. We're helping the CISO bring security and cyber posture of their industrial networks into the 21st century. We've always been really good from a safety and physical point of view and a compliance point of view, but cyber and technology is now introducing a new risk. And when you start to think about the dangers related to this, they're severe. Not just hacktivists that have a political message that they might want to have to deface types of networks, but also now you have criminals wanting to steal information, perhaps ransom operations for money. What is interesting to observe is that the red lines are actually shifting. So we're seeing cyber criminals getting into things such as ransomware for industrial control systems, right? Um, that is a very different um, threat than just nation states. But now we have terrorism as well. And when you start to put terrorism together with espionage, with hacktivists, with criminals, and you put that all into our critical infrastructure, the ramifications can be great. You have an amazing, almost perfect storm, as I like to think about it, uh, happening in our critical infrastructure. More and more devices are connecting. More and more devices are connecting not only to ground-based fiber internet, but they're also now connecting to satellites. And our critical infrastructure is transforming awfully quickly. So you think about your, your car and your planes and your smart grid and everything down to your refrigerator and your thermostat. But when applied to industrial companies and global 2000 type companies, this now has kinetic ramifications. Coming from the IT space, you know, I thought that I would find, given the fact that those machines are pretty important, that I would find somewhat of a sophisticated cybersecurity posture. And to my surprise, there really wasn't much security in that space. So not just from my view, but from Homeland Security's view, the dangers and the threats that we're seeing in our critical infrastructure today are only rising. I think the good news is you're seeing companies like Clarity begin to address those problems, but obviously the danger is clear and present at this moment. We need to remember that the number one okay, KPI for those networks is uptime and availability, okay? which is very different than, than the objectives that we have in the IT domain. So what ended up happening is for the last decade, we tried taking IT tools and applying them into the OT domain. And in you know, the best case scenario, that didn't help because those technologies, they did not understand the industrial protocols, they, could not, they did not understand the endpoints because they were not built for that environment. We were stuck in an environment where we were trying to apply the playbook that we know from the IT security world, and that just simply was not working for the OT networks. Most companies don't have a single responsibility for the OT operations, for the operational technology inside the, the company, and I think that is something that needs to be filled. Usually that comes from the chief security officer in the company, but not all companies have responsibility and governance from that person across all of their manufacturing and all of their operations. But I think it's really important that they do. Some of the best companies that I've been working with now are giving that responsibility to them. And you know, it's, it's about time. We need to solve this problem because of the risk, because of the threats, and because of the criminal activities and espionage activities we're seeing. We're helping the CISO bring security and cyber posture of their industrial networks into the 21st century, Real, literally, right? So you're starting by having visibility into those networks, understanding how those networks operate, what is considered normal in those networks, and apply a governance process, which is not something that they have had until now. Is there any deviant behavior that's occurring in the network? Are there any bad guys in your network? What kinds of problems and risks are associated with your manufacturing and your energy systems and so on? We're talking about networks that are hosting equipment that is 25, 35 years old in some cases. Those networks are typically not encrypted, right? There's no authentication. You don't actually have to hack into a POC. Once you're inside of the network, all you need to do is you need to use legitimate industrial control commands to tell the POC, which is the controller, what to do with the physical process. 
which when you think about it is, is kind of scary. Clarity provides visibility and security for the industrial control system networks that pretty much run every aspect of our lives. Everything from oil and gas to manufacturing to the HVAC in this building to nuclear power plants, really anything that is the cyber-physical connectivity. So first of all, we start with providing extreme visibility into the industrial control system networks. What does that mean? It means that we're able to see the assets and the communications all the way down to the physical level. The skater level, the controller level, all the way down to the actuators and the sensors that are controlling the physical process. We do that across IP-based nodes as well as non-IP-based nodes, which is quite a lot of the nodes in those networks are on a field bus, zero communication. Um, and we do that across all of the major ICS vendors. Given that visibility, the second thing we do is we provide the security teams with deep insights into those networks, such as network misconfigurations, for example, that could either harm the process or could be a potential way of attackers getting into the network. Third, leveraging our advanced anomaly detection techniques, we're able to detect malicious activities at any stage of the kill chain, as well as high-risk changes that might impact the actual uptime and availability of the process. What is really important is that those alerts are actionable, providing the context that the IT security teams need to be able to address the issues that they're seeing in the industrial networks. We start by building a very fine-grained baseline model uh, by leveraging our DPI engines and advanced protocol analysis to dissect dozens of open and proprietary protocols that allows us to extract the context out of the communications and therefore provide relevant alerts to the security teams. Our technology is completely passive and therefore 100% safe for the operations of those networks. In Clarity's case, they're illuminating the threats that are occurring in our critical infrastructure. And they're doing it in a way that's very safe. The ability to understand a complete view of your entire OT system is what Clarity brings you so by being able to understand deep packet inspection, behavioral analysis, you can immediately, real-time, know when there's a problem. It could be an accident, it could be a safety issue, it could be uh, an adversary attacking the network, but by having real-time behavioral analysis, which I've never seen before in these markets, you have the ability to stop, potentially, a catastrophic problem. So Clarity is very unique in what it does, breadth and depth of its visibility, breadth and depth of its monitoring, and I think this solution is, uh, is a very important technology today.